So, hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Glastonbury Gabriel YouTube video. I'm back at Building C. Um, we came here late last year, and the video came out a couple of weeks ago, uh, where we were shown around by Robin. Um, Robin is now retired, and we're here today to meet Rob, who is going to show us around and show us some of the exciting things that are going on here. And believe you me, a load has changed. So, let's go meet Rob and see what's happening. So here we are with Rob. Um, hello, Rob. Hi. Um, and let's find out what's been going on at the Red Brick since we last came, because I know there's a lot happened. And also, let's see if some of the people have been involved in what's been going on since we were last here. So, Rob, what do you want to tell me? Um, we finished the first phase of the project at the end of March. Um, that was the accelerator fund. Um, which was delivered on time and in budget. That was led by uh, Robin Howe. Uh, he's, he stepped back at the end of March. Um, and yeah, we all miss him really. Uh, Robin is a natural phenomenon. He is a uh, lightning conductor and he's come in and kicked this all off. We're all figuring out how, how much we miss him, really. Yeah, I mean, ho hopefully we will see Robin at the opening, so don't worry, viewers. you will be seeing Robin again. I know a lot of you want to see him, but he will be making a reappearance soon, hopefully. And, yeah, it's just to mention a couple of other folk as well. There's been Tom, Tom Clark. He's been here um, day in, day out, through winter, through having no roof on here, through COVID, through all the lockdowns. Um, really... Uh, Encouraging, getting to know everybody and encouraging, been uh, rock steady. So that's he was quite keen on seeing the bridge up as well, wasn't he? Yeah, he was the first to cross actually. He was the first to cross. He was the first to cross the bridge, wasn't <laughs> yeah, he? Yeah, he, uh, he did that. In fact, he did his, you'll see later viewers, his interview takes place up there, so he's very keen on the bridges, Tom. So who else has been involved? So called Nick McLean, a really experienced, very talented structural engineer, and he's been one of the key elements in in what this project is around uh, regenerating an existing building rather than ripping bits off it and starting again. Uh, the, the great majority, we've kept the great majority of the building and reused it. And that really, you know, environmentally, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, and also Steve Bradbury, who's been uh, doing work here and uh, it's just a really steady presence. Many things have gone on in here since I was last here. We're going to see a lot of new things from when we were last around. Have you had any problems, any major obstacles to overcome in that time? Any hitches, any un unforeseen... <laughs> He's smiling, yes they were. <laughs> There's been some really, uh, really solid technical refurbishment of the primary structure and the fabric of the building which has gone ahead which has been fantastic for a project that is partly run by uh, experienced trades folk but also by many folk that aren't skilled and they've played a, a massive part in it and um, picked up skills presumably. And, and picked up skills along the way um, and to answer your question um, <laughs> yeah all the building work's gone very well. Excellent. Well, I'm really excited to see what's going on in there now. So, should we should we go inside and have a look? Please do. Yeah. Let's, Let's do that. Go. So here we are in what is going to become the youth club. Uh, this is the first room Robin and I looked at when we came here last time. So, uh, yeah. What can you tell me about this one? Um, well, if you can imagine some glass-fronted rooms. Uh, along the wall here, there's going to be a hack space, a computer space and a, a few other uh, gathering spaces. Um, this all needs cleaning down and there will be either a bouldering wall or a climbing wall which goes up to uh, the, the ceiling up there. Catherine Clark is driving the youth provision uh, and then they're going to have just outside of here, there'll be uh, an outdoor space right outside. Um, through the doors there, there's their own dedicated uh, toilets. A really absolutely brilliant part of this project is the way that Nick McLean, our very talented uh, and experienced engineer, said 98% of the material that is here will be reused and that's what happens. You'll see the beam up here was completely failed and dropped down. Um, that's all been repaired, strengthened with the steel work that's up there. The heating system here is a, a hyper-inverter 
air source heat pump uh, installed by Ian Hobbs Technical. Um, it basically, there's, there's chillers on the wall outside and they take the warmth out of the air outside, concentrate it and bring it to these blowers inside the building. So in terms of, it's, 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 it's meant to be one of the most efficient forms of heating there is. And low impact on the environment as well, presumably? And low impact on the environment. Excellent. What's coming down the line, hopefully, um, with the main tranche funding is Avalon Community Energy with a solar park in Beckery, just up the road here. Uh, and the idea there is that the 12 projects that are going forward with the town's fund funding, we will find out in June in a couple of months who gets the funding and how much they get. Um, but should that all come to be, that the solar arrays there and the renewable energy that's generated um, firstly feeds all of the 12 projects and there will be a surplus after that that goes uh, back into the grid. So we've come upstairs now and what a transformation's taken place in here. If you remember in the last film, Robin was telling me to walk at right angles, do not walk diagonally because you probably would have fallen through. Well, the transformation is amazing. The roof has gone up, the beams are all in, the windows are in. It's night and day. So, Rob, tell me, what work's taking place in here and, and what's coming up next? So, uh, in here, there's the, the primary structure as downstairs. Um, all of the all of the beams are pine and the, the trusses are pine um, there's quite a lot of rot in a lot of that and all of the, the posts are oak. Yeah, it was a matter of looking at each individual element and seeing which were rotten and what happened, had to happen to each one. And there's been some good innovations around pairing them. So as you can see here, this in the end was just cast in with concrete to save the, the truss and, uh, and we can use it and it's going to last an awful lot longer. Sections of the floor were just completely rotted. There was a bitumen layer over the whole top of the floor in here, which was a hugely laborious job to chip out. And I think that was to do with stopping um, dust going downstairs. Some of the sections of the floor we've kept, which have been strengthened, and the other areas of floor we've, we've needed new rafters in right through. And then finishing off with this cable floor that you can see now. The fire system that's gone in, that's Steve Woods has done an excellent job with that. And then the electrical system, uh, Michael Jones has been um, done a yeah, fantastic job, meticulous guy, and that's, that's gone in as well. This whole first floor was open and we've put this, uh, as you see, this OSB wall through here. So I think the first thing Robin did, there was a, a little hatch put in as a viewing point. Now, now this has been done, we've got a window so people can look through to phase two and what, what it looked like before it was done up. Phase two, or the main phase, we've put in for 2.7 million to finish the rest of the envelope of the building and fit it out. That includes the, the youth provision and uh, the classroom B media hub and maybe a music studio, depending on what, what happens. I've noticed that uh, while we're in here, the, uh, the pigeon population is, as ever, quite high. Even in the new build, you've got pigeons. Um, how do you kind of evict them and what happens to them when they go? And is, is there work being done around that or do they just get locked out and find their own way? Basically, we're going to finish all everything that we need to do and before we do the final clean we will have to evict the pigeons. Uh, there's a lot of ways of doing that. Um, I had a good conversation with Jez from Wells Cathedral Works team recently. Uh, they have a massive issue with pigeons and have done for a long time and he talked me through everything that they do. Yeah, so the pigeons are going. They've just not gone yet. You've got to move the eggs, you've got to move the birds, and there are folk here that um, are that want to do that. Um, and our neighbour Chris Black has built a dovecote at the end of the car park there, 
I'm not sure if they're taking it or not yet. Mm. Um, but I, I don't doubt they'll find um, a new place to live. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. This level is more or less finished for this phase. There's a completely new section of Kingspan roof above here, but three of the four sections have been kept. We've got um, Blanca Kakolva. Um, he has got a really interesting team together looking at uh, clothes upcycling, textiles recycling and upcycling that will be up here. And then Ella Kopshoot who is going to be leading the charge with an arts group that's going to be up here as well. Hello everybody! Here we are on this wonderful bridge, which was the first initiative for uh, this extraordinary red brick Beckery Village development project that became possible because dear Boris saw fit to give Glastonbury quite a lot of money to develop this post-industrial Beckery Village and effectively bring it back to life. And how are we gonna start? Well, Robin, our master builder, had this sort of brainwave that will start with something really noticeable really unusual and really quite exciting and the word bridge very key to this in a way because it it is a bridge to something in the future it was built right during the height of the lockdown down at ground level was sort of consumed in a way by pain paranoia isolation depression ground level had become a kind almost a kind of a swamp very difficult to live in. And by building this bridge, I was up here a lot during the building of it. I began to realize that just raising yourself 30 feet in the air on this bridge, it was a kind of invitation to, to be in a different space, to be up and out of the swamp. I mean, Robin had originally said, kinds of people, what do, what do you build that bridge for? The first response was, well, because we can. And actually that was another great value of it because when the Towns Fund people started looking for a project to manifest very quickly, they're gonna give us 250,000 in six months to complete something. And they looked at us building this bridge and they kind of, the immediate feeling was, well, these people can do it, they can deliver. So it was really the opening gambit for a really exciting development of red brick building. So you join me now, I'm with Nick McLean. Now, if you watch the first video, Robin frequently referred to the structural engineer as this godlike entity in the background. Well, this is he. Say hello. How do you do, everybody, whoever you are, whoever's <laughs> looking? So, um, tell me, the, the ethos behind this is to keep what's yeah, it, 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 it's, it was just needing a little bit of repair, needing, uh, uh, and as I said, think of it like a building under construction, uh, sweep up the pigeon shit and the broken glass and um, get on with it. And that's what we did 11 years ago, 12 years ago to start with, made it safe, it was then handed over to the community and then um, it's carried on and then returned and uh, 18 months ago Robin called me and said he needed some help and I came along and did another appraisal and helped them to make all the repairs they've done in the last 18 months. And of course the beauty of the way this is being done is a majority of that building up there 80% is original now rather than being ripped out and started again. Yeah, that it, fair yeah more than 80%. It, it's all um, just because, for example, a roof rafter has a little bit of a rotten end, you don't throw the whole piece of timber away. And my original appraisal was that maybe 2% of the building was beyond repair. The rest of it could be fixed, it could be reused. And as, as little a percentage as that. So the assessment that it was cheaper to demolish than to make safe was entirely wrong, which is how we had a meeting in the town hall of an extraordinary gentleman and that was on there. Yeah, it, it, all these things you think bricks, they last forever. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Okay. Um, and we'll be coming back, as I say, to, to view the, the work here, right up until the point it opens. Yeah, good. Which will be really good. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. So we're actually looking at what's going to be a music studio here then Rob. Yes, 
Bex is leading the charge on this. She's been she's been here from uh, early on, um, and her and Ella and Hamza are going to be building a, a a box within a box to um, both keep sound coming in and sound going out. That's good because there's not a lot of provision for that sort of thing around Glastonbury. Yes. Surprisingly. Yeah. Oh, this is good. Um, so, are we, do we know when this is going to be open? I imagine later this year. We've been offered some um, recording equipment, which Ooh, is great. Nice. Um, we've been offered a few things actually, which is people have just walked in and, and it's been brilliant. Um, it may be, depending on funding, that we have a second music studio further back in the building in the main in the um, in the main phase of works, uh, but funding to be confirmed on that one. I've got to ask, being a videographer, is there any video studios planned or anything like that? Yeah. Sort of media work? It's been talked about. Uh, we're talking about having maybe a central rehearsing room, student room, which is surrounded by the Glastrium Media Hub, which would be um, two radio studios, a music studio, a video um, editing studio. Where to next then, Rob? Uh, so in here is going to be the woodwork studio. OK, let's go and have a look at that. This is, uh, this is in use now because, um, yeah, we've been using it to make stuff for the build. So you see these fantastic doors that Steve has done. Um, they were made, made in here because we've got a woodwork studio. It's not fully set up yet, but you can see the, the makings of it. No, it's going to be good. I mean, again, a workshop like this in Glastonbury is just invaluable. There's no provision for anything like this. Glastonbury is a, a magnet for talented people. Yes. And to have to have somewhere where they can actually go and be creative. Yeah, absolutely. That's good. That's good. I mean, if people come in here, they'll be shown how to use the machines. Uh, they need to be supervised by, you know, experienced folk. But um, once that's done, um, an open access workshop beyond that, potential for, for, for for learning and, and maybe qualifications as well, because we're speaking to Strode College. So, so good to see what is happening. Um, what's next? Did you mention the laundry? The Beckery People's Laundry. Yeah, that sounds got interesting. That. Sounds like the Tooting Popular People's Front. Yeah. Or is it the Popular Tooting People's Front? I can never remember. <laughs> so that's going to be a wheelchair access WC in there. Uh, this is behind the scenes, obviously. Yes. Um, Wow. Wow, how pleasant is this? So this particular spot is part of the laundry? Yep, so Steve, Steve Bradbury's putting this decking in the, what you can see around here. Basically, there's gonna be two showers that are on uh, coin meters, there's gonna be two toilets, and then two washer dryers and a Belfast sink. Folk that don't have that at home, can come here, wash themselves, wash their clothes. Um, this is just access from the, from the outside of the building. And the idea is that the, the, this will be attended by volunteers. This is a beautiful spot. This is absolutely wonderful. By the mill stream, it's, it's quite a sweet little place really. Well, there you go. That's what's happened since we were last here. As you can see, absolute loads of work going on. Um, I'm stood here in the community garden now, having left the building. Um, so we will be back. We will be coming back as more develops, more happens. As you can see, some of the rooms are almost ready to uh, be inhabited now. So it won't be long. And so until the next video, thanks for watching. Don't forget, do all the boring YouTube button pushing stuff that they always ask you to do. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.